Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. We've got David writing in here. We've got an email, viewer question. The heading of this email is Speedlight Recommendation. David writes in and says, Hello, good morning. I want to thank you for all the great videos you have out there on YouTube. They are very, very informative and I really appreciate them. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you and thank you for the compliment and I'm glad to be of help. I want to know what off-camera speed light and radio transmitter you would recommend for the Canon EOS Rebel S11 100D. Any recommendations for this particular model? My budget is something around the $200 mark, and I'm a complete beginner to DSLR camera and external flash. Thank you. So, first of all, um, the lowest Canon I would probably recommend is, is probably with that outside of your, your price point, and that's the Canon 430EX3, um, and that's $249 uh, I'm looking at currently here. Um, and you can, I'll put a link below. You can check that out on both Amazon and B&H. Um, it's a great little flash, but again, it's outside of your price point. If, that, if you can move your budget up, that's really good. However, not necessary to move your budget up because there's a lot of great off-brand uh, alternatives to Canon. Uh, this one here is the newer NW680 or the TT680. It's a high-speed uh, speed light and it's fully ETTL compatible. So you're basically getting essentially all the goodness in a Canon light with a, another brand at a fraction of the price. This one's $59.99. And uh, so this will do your high-speed sync, it'll do your ETTL, and it'll work great with your camera. Now, what I would recommend for radio triggers is something like these newer 16-channel um, speed light radio trigger and receiver sets. This one comes with one trigger and two receivers, $14.69. Now, be aware... I use these, I love these, but these are fully manual. In other words, you're not going to be able to make adjustments on your camera using the trigger system. You need to go out and adjust the power on your speed light. You can't control it from your camera. So if you set a speed light off camera and you have it out there and you want to adjust the power, you've got to go out and manually adjust the power. For me, it's not a problem. I've worked with these type of ones for a long time. I like that they're cheap. Uh, in, or I should say inexpensive, these tend to work very well. You very rarely have them fail on you, and they're so inexpensive that if you do, if you lose one or you forget to pick one up from a situation or one gets broken or whatnot, it's not a big deal. So that's why I really like these, and I use these a lot. These are my go-tos in the sense of the kind of radio triggers I use and the value for the price. Now, if you are looking for something with some control, there's options like um, Yongnu makes some really good ones. This Yongnu uh, YNE3RT uh, is, a, is a transmitter, and it'll work with the um, speed light, and you can make your controls to the different groups and different lights and increase and lower your exposure right from camera, which is really handy, no doubt about it. You're just spending a little more money. In this case, $83.99. If you want to go that route, probably what I would suggest, I quite like Yongnu as well, good products. I would suggest getting this kit here. This is the Yongnu YN600 EXRT. So it's a good flash. It's full ETTL, um, same as the other flash we were looking at there. And it also comes with the YN E3 RT radio transmitter. So in this case, uh, I think the one we're looking at here is $194. I'll put a link below. You can check these out on Amazon. And uh, I'm not sure if this is available on B&H. I will check. If it is, I'll put a link. But basically, you can get the set. So you get a, a paired set here. You have the transmitter and you have the light. They work together. They work in tandem. And it's within your budget. It's this one here, this, is, this listing is for $194. So it allows you full creative control from the camera. And there are some great advantages to that. So you either have the option to go with something very inexpensive like the $14 set with two receivers and a transmitter and then you're doing manual adjustments out. You have to walk out to wherever you've placed the um, speed lights off camera and make your adjustments. In this situation though, you spend a little more money, you got control right from the camera from the transmitter. Um, very handy to have. However, I still tend to use the manual ones. So it just depends what you want to spend and if you're okay using the manual ones. Um, certainly, these are a bit of a luxury in the sense of it's nice to work with and it allows for a lot of control right from camera. Maybe a little bit more efficient, maybe a little faster. And, 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 and you know what? Maybe I should start shooting with something more along these lines. I've definitely worked with these. They, these the same type of setup is available for both Canon and for both Nikon. Uh, some you can actually use a master speed light to control your other speed lights in those situations and you can do that with some of these as well but uh, that's the type of situation I would work with you could also look at getting um, one of these speed lights that has the full master control 
so in other words, instead of buying a, a transmitter, you could buy two of these speed lights. In fact, I think this Yongnu here actually is a bit, uh, able to be used as a master controller. So that may be an even better option for you is to look at two of the YN600 speed lights um, as one as a master and one as a slave. Um, that way you can use it on camera and control the off-camera ones and you just have more speed lights and more flexibility as opposed to just the transmitters. Again, flexible in terms of what you can do. You can buy this kit that has the transmitter and the speed light included or you could get a couple of speed lights and then you'd have two of them and you could use one as um, the master and the other one as the slave in situations where you want it off camera but you can also use the one on camera to contribute to your light situation. So we're not going to get into a whole uh, discussion on how to do off-camera lighting and whatnot here, but just some options you can go with. So um, I throw it back to our audience, though, our viewers. What do you guys think? What would you go with? Do you like the uh, manual, less expensive ones, like the $14 set um, that's manual? You have to go do that manually, but less expensive, easy to deal with if one breaks or you lose one. Uh, or do you prefer to have the full control on camera, such as these Yong News, uh, either with the transmitter in the shoe and then the, the uh, flash off camera and you're just working with the transmitter or using two uh, of, for instance, the Yongnu YN600s, which we can use one as a controller. Uh, what do you guys prefer? Um, you, more of the manual old school and less expensive or you like the newer stuff that allows you full control from your camera? Let me know in the comments below. Um, always great to hear back from you guys. Uh, is there another brand you'd recommend, something else you might recommend, or another flash system? Uh, I really like the Young News. Um, Altura makes a couple. I'll put a few links below to uh, various options for the speed lights here, um, as well as the controllers, um, just because these, these were a few of the ones I picked out just off the top of my head that I know are very good and I would recommend, but there's a few others out there, so I'll, I'll put links below to those. Uh, looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Thanks for your question, and uh, stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at ArtOfTheImage.com.